What's going on? What's going on? Get a couple of bumps. All right, all right, all right. We are trucking here. Welcome to my new trucking show called The Fifth Wheel. I haven't changed the graphics yet, but um, I'm getting around to it. And here on this show, we will be talking about all things trucking. Um, no drama on this show unless it's involving trucking. Right, we won't get into any fights and debates on here unless it's about trucking. Shout out to Jay Rich Trucking. Sister got her own trucking business going on. This is a good time for black folks to get into trucking. To see what COVID-19 affected everything. Rates are great. Man, I didn't I I wish I had a a 30 day uh, hiatus like you guys did. Remember, many of you had that 30-day hiatus with the stimulus checks, you know, sitting up there looking all cool, barbecuing and shit. I didn't get a chance to do that because trucking picked up. And since I haul reefers, I haul food and frozen goods and all that stuff, we never slowed down. Actually, we picked up. As a matter of fact, right now, the uh, reefer business, man, can't be stopped. I mean, we... There's, there's loads out the wazoo. This is a great time for black people to get into trucking. And um, again, I want to give a big shout out to Jay Rich Trucking over at Jay Rich Live. She says she is the queen who stepped outside of her comfort zone and created a new comfort zone. That's what I'm talking about. So let's give a big bump for Jay Rich Trucking. I'm going to drop a link in the chat. Mm-hmm. All right, anyway. <clears throat> One second. All right. Let me drop a link here. Beautiful sister, black woman, doing her thing in trucking. Now, I know some of you uh, brothers out there may be jealous and upset because you're not doing anything. So, but this is a great time for black people to get into trucking and start a trucking business. Now, what we're going to talk about here on the show today, and we won't be long. I don't plan for these shows to be long. I'm going to upload them to a new channel. Ain't no way. We're going to talk about leasing versus buying a truck. I had a lot of questions. 
talk to a lot of guys about leasing and, and buying a truck. And that's the difference between leasing a truck to work for a company or to lease on to a company is much different than lease purchase. Okay? And then maybe next show, we'll talk about the differences between leasing a truck and lease purchase. Okay? So there are differences. All right? So. And all y'all out there looking for those lease purchase programs, I'm telling you right now, it's like bad, bad, and bad, and bad with lease purchase programs. Now, I hear some cowboys talking about they did well and all of that, but you have to be mindful of that. Usually those are spokespersons for the company. All right? These companies have a farming mentality when it comes down to people. They farm people. That's why they have such a high turnover rate when it comes down to hiring. You see a company that's hiring everybody and they mama like every five minutes, like every other day, bringing in 12, 13 people. You need to run away from that company. That's not a company that you want to be. You, you don't want to be there. You don't want to. That's not a company you can really um, sit back and relax and build up some money with. Okay. That's what I've known. Being out here almost 18 years, the companies that have a revolving door like that usually have the worst dispatchers, a really poor attitude, always trying to do something with your money. You got to watch your money every minute. I'm talking about, I work for a company, Prime, where you had to watch stuff every single day. Your, your, your dispatcher would steal money from you. They would make it seem like um, you took an advance when you really didn't. And it was hard to dispute because they had your information, right? So it looks like it looked like you called in the advance. So there was something going on every single day that you had to watch. Some of these companies are absolute crooked organizations. But anyway, we'll get into we'll get into the crooked and the dark side of trucking. Right now, I want to talk about leasing and versus buying a truck. So I've been asked about this. All right. Now, now choosing whether to lease or buy a truck, it doesn't have to be complicated. Now, sometimes fleet owners, right? I said this before. When you want a fleet, it's best to lease. You don't want to buy a fleet. You don't want to have, you don't want to buy five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten trucks. You'd rather lease a small fleet from like Freightliner or Kenworth or something like that. But I wouldn't recommend Kenworth because they're very hard, they're very expensive to, uh, to maintain. I'm sorry, I got distracted. Okay, and so listen. So often the choice between leasing or buying comes down to the intended purpose of a truck and how much money you want to spend. So, so, so what's the purpose of the truck? Do you want the truck to just do local stuff? Do you want the truck to do long haul? You know? There's a difference. Local, less wear and tear. Long haul, more wear and tear. Why I was on the truck. You see, there are factors to consider. There are factors to consider when you are trying to decide to lease or buy a truck. Okay. Again, long haul or short haul. And I'm going to tell you something. You have to really think about this too, people. Don't just jump out there because you want a truck. See, this is how you get caught out there with these lease purchase programs. They take advantage of that. They take advantage of your enthusiasm. 
you wanted to be an owner operator because people have um, talked to you about owner operators in the past and you are now romanticizing being an owner operator. So you're jumping out there with all of this, 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 this glee, this enthusiasm. And these crooked companies, they see that and trust me, they got something for you. So, so, how much money do you expect to spend on monthly payments? And it, okay, and don't forget your security deposit. Now, this is when you 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 want to buy a truck. Okay, how much money do you expect to spend on a, on monthly payments? Now, when you're leasing, purchasing a truck, you're paying a big payment every week. See, there's so much money in trucking, you can afford to make an eight, nine hundred dollar payment every week and still make a little bit of money. But they take all that away from you and lease the purchase. Well, again, I keep going, you know, maybe I should have did this show. Maybe this show should have been about lease purchase because I, still, I got lease purchase on my mind for some reason. Yeah. Now, when you're deciding on how much money you expect, to spend on a monthly payment and determine your security deposit. The next thing you want to think about when you're buying the truck. See, again, if you notice, right, I'm not just telling you to go into a truck dealer and buy a truck. It just simply don't work that way. It's not like a car, all right? It's not like a car. You don't just go into my hey, I like this car and shit. I like the colors and, and shit. I like the bucket seats. I like the rainbow bright seat belts. So I'm going, no, it don't work that way. With truck, it's much, much, much different. Okay, there's a lot of things you have to consider. Like for example, again, we talked about how much money you expect to spend on a monthly payment. And don't forget your security deposit because that affects your monthly payment, of course, in the truck. Then what about the freight? What kind of freight you gonna haul? Drive goods, you're gonna haul household goods, you're gonna haul food. And will you make enough money off of that freight to make a lease payment or a trucking payment? See, these are the things you gotta consider when you go and buy a truck. And you already have to have this stuff together. You have to have this shit written down. What company you intend to lead, uh, what, what company you intend to run that truck under? What kind of freight they have? How much money you gonna make on that freight on a weekly basis determines how you're gonna buy this truck. And how much money you're ultimately gonna pay for this truck. Or even if you can pay for this truck. How many miles you expect to get out of the truck? Another thing you got to consider, remember, short haul, long haul, once you pay your down payment on this truck, how many miles do you expect to get out of it? A million? A couple of hundred thousand? Now you got to also look at how many miles that's on the truck. Now one thing about a truck, trucks are built to run. Hot miles on the truck don't necessarily mean the truck is garbage, okay? Now, some of them are. I, I mean, I've had trucks that had hardly no fucking miles on them and they were fucking pieces of shit. Excuse my friends. I mean, they were absolute garbage. I mean, I had a brand new Kenworth one time. Um, um, and it must have broke down 17 times within a month. On the course of two months, 17 times. With barely any miles on it. If I wasn't under warranty, I would have lost my shirt on that brand new truck. If I wasn't on if I wasn't under warranty. So just because a truck has high miles doesn't mean that it's a piece of junk. You know, most drivers, seasoned drivers, like a truck with a 
about 200,000 miles on it because it's nice and broken in. It's already got its first overhead. You don't have to worry about that. Now it's not guzzling fuel. Anything more than 100,000, I mean, you're really risking coming out of your pocket. At least, at least it has to have its first overhead done. See, if I go and I, I pick out a truck and I ask myself, okay, do you have to add low miles on it? Okay? So that tells me right there the overhead wasn't done yet. Okay, so I don't want to, I really don't want to deal with trucks that haven't had their first overhead because they burn too much fuel. Okay, all right, so, so how many miles do you expect to get out of this vehicle? Okay. And so what are the uh, available options for both funding? I'm sorry, what are your um, available funding options for both purchasing and lease agreements? What are your options? How, how are you how are you put the bill for this? Where's the money coming from? What are your funding options? So you have to consider all of these things. Now, once you consider all your financing options and the future business use of your truck, then you can make the proper decision on whether you should get a new or used truck. Okay? Now, we'll talk about, because I've had both, new and used. Okay, so we'll talk a few minutes about both. Of course, let me um, check the chat out here. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Justin, what's going on? Thanks, Justin. All right. Doing my trucker thing today. Welcome to my new show, y'all, called The Fifth Wheel, where we talk about all things trucking. And shout out to Jay Rich Trucking. I got her link in the chat. Sister doing her thing. Just got her uh, government contract for her business. Okay, so anyway... <clears throat> Let's start with used trucks, okay? There are some drawbacks when adding a used truck or buying a used truck. If you don't have a fleet, there's some drawbacks to adding one. Uh, I'm sorry. If you have a fleet, there's some drawbacks to adding one, right? If you don't have a fleet, there's still some drawbacks. Because remember, if you never had a truck before, so you don't know what it's like. You don't have really no, you, you don't have the experience. So you can't hear certain things. So me and my friend in the chat here, you know, you know, Justin Williams, we've been driving trucks for years. There's certain things that we can listen to in the engine or certain things that we can hear and we'll know what's wrong with the truck. That comes over a long period of time. So if you've never had a truck before, you don't have this knowledge. You don't have this experience with trust. So, so, so you're brand new. So you have to be very careful. I recommend this. When you go buy a truck, when you think about buying a truck, find an experienced truck driver, someone who's been on the road for more than 10 years. Okay? The longer he or she has been on the road, the better. Even if you don't know a truck driver, go to the truck stops, Find out who's who's in town, okay, for for who's on a thirty four hour reset or don't have to leave for 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 a while. Talk to them, introduce yourself. Tell them you're thinking about buying a truck buy a truck and see if it'll take a ride with you to go take a look at the truck at a dealership. Some of them might unhook. And, and, and drive you over there themselves. And, and a lot of drivers are more than happy to sit down and talk to you. Some of these guys are long-winded. 
All they do is travel all day. They don't talk to anybody. So you're like fresh meat. You come up talking about some, hey, you know, I'm thinking about getting my new truck. Whoa, yeah, well, sit on that. Let me tell you about what happened. Now, you see, uh, 17 years ago, when I thought about getting my first truck, my wife had her own truck, and she didn't want to do anything. And I said, well, darling, i take the truck out and make some money with it. And she said, well, you're going to have to take it back to the dealer because the wheels done fell off. So as I'm putting the wheels back on, the truck started up, and I don't know how it moved because it had no fuel in it, but, you know, it's a woman's truck, so maybe it had an attitude. Now, you're going to find the guys in every truck stop. These guys been out here driving for a thousand years. They know everything. They know all the speed limits. They know all the stop signs. Hell, they can tell you where stop signs used to be and traffic signs used to be where there ain't no traffic signs no more. These guys would be more than happy to talk to you about trucking. Okay? More than happy. So when you're looking to buy a new truck, you definitely want to go take a, a ride to a truck stop. Go hang out. Well, with COVID-19 now, people are so goddamn scared, uh, you know, uh, you might have to stand outside and, you know, holler at somebody. So, okay, so anyway, uh, excuse me. All right. Now, And one thing about a used truck, okay, you have to understand this too. See, I don't want to go with anything too old because a used truck has already been on the road. And one of the common mistakes that a lot of new truck owners make, especially also trucking uh, um, um, business owners, they get these old, torn down, beat down trucks, thinking they're getting a deal. The truck got like two million miles on it, okay? But they don't check other things. Like if the frame is bent, they don't check the accident report on the truck. They don't check the axles on the truck. They don't check the um, drivetrain. I worked for an oil operator a while back, the goddamn drivetrain fell out. In the middle of the damn highway, drivetrain, drivetrain just said, fuck it, blue. And I glided to a stop. The truck was that bad. You can't do that, man. You know, get your mechanic. Get the history. The, the accident history is extremely important on the truck. Because what you don't want is a truck with a bent frame. And usually you'll find those. A refurbished truck that's been involved in a rollover. You don't want that. Because the frame is probably twisted. You don't want to twist your frame. Okay? So, people make the mistake and they go too cheap. And they got like nine fucking billion miles on the truck. Next thing you know, the truck is constantly breaking down. One thing has finally happened after another because wear and tear, right? So, when one thing is wearing out, the other one is working on wearing itself out. So, you the money fixing that a day two days later the other thing wears out you put it back in the shop another week or so something else wears out this is this is what you face with used trucks depending on how old they are and how much homework you do you want to go and do your homework you should never go into a truck dealer and come out with a truck in one day. If you go to a trucking dealer with a truck, I mean, with a, I'm sorry, intent on buying a truck or purchasing a truck, and you come out with that truck in one day, you're a damn fool. And I guarantee you, you've gotten taken to the cleaners, you just don't know it yet. 
okay? This should take you almost a week or maybe even up to two weeks to decide what truck you're going to buy. And that's after several trips to either the same dealer or multiple dealers looking at the same exact make and model truck, asking questions, waiting for paperwork to come back, asking the dealer, look, I need an accident report. If the dealer don't want to give you an accident report on a truck, leave. Don't come back. Don't come back. Go somewhere else. Okay? You don't want to hear shit. Okay? Everything that you ask for from the dealer, if he doesn't give you one thing, you get the hell out of there. Leave. Leave. Don't even come back. Because that's the dealer that's dishonest. So, definitely want to ask the report. Now, here's another thing. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm dragging along because I'm doing two things at once. Um, again, used trucks have, have a very minimal warranty, too. That's another disadvantage of a used truck. That's why you have to... Um, get involved in these big nationwide maintenance programs where you can buy in at uh, a nickel a mile or six cents a mile, okay? Because that helps you when the warranty runs out on your truck. And it will run out on a used truck. All right? And then another thing too, are you getting the truck as it is? Which I recommend, in, in, in my humble opinion, never get the truck as it is. That's just me. I'm not buying no as is truck. Not doing that. But some people think that that's okay because, look, they're just trying to get the truck on the road. They want to get their first couple of loads in. They think that their first couple of loads can cover any kind of breakdown. Okay, well, whatever floats your boat, partner. I won't do it. Not, not an as is. Hell no. Because you don't know what the hell's wrong with that truck. Like I said, I was driving the truck for an owner operator years ago. Damn drivetrain fell out. You know how much that costs? And what was sad about it was he got the drivetrain fixed on that piece of shit. I would have jumped the whole truck. The truck wasn't worth it. I would have jumped the goddamn thing. He got it fixed. Spent all that money. We just could have bought a, a, a better used truck. See, look, my advice to you is this. Save your money, man. Save your money. Don't just run into a trucking dealer because you're all excited and you're feeling like Pee Wee Herman and you want a new truck. But you don't have the money right now, so you settle for some beat down jalopy. Don't do that, man. That can break you in this business. That can knock the taste out of your mouth. That can knock your nerve out. How much these trucks cost when they go down, depending on what it is. Man, you can have one breakdown that'll bankrupt you. You know how much these mechanics cost an hour? Some of these mechanics get paid like lawyers, high powered lawyers. Two, three hundred dollars an hour. Serious. You don't want the work. You don't want the wrong breakdown. So, I recommend you save your money and get a decent truck. Get a truck that's between new and used, or half new, half used. Get you something in the middle. Get you something with about. 
150,000 miles on it. It won't be too bad because you're almost at your first overhead. You can get 50,000 miles in no time. Spend you some money. A decent truck is about thirty, thirty-five thousand dollars, maybe forty. I know some of you gonna let me. That's too much. Listen, if you want to make money in this business and you want to stay, in, you want to stay around and not go under, then you have to make the best decision possible. Thirty, forty thousand dollars. I say anywhere between thirty-five and forty thousand should be your first truck. And that's after it's been thoroughly inspected and you've had a mechanic over there, you've paid several visits to the trucking dealership, you talked to people, you sat down with a few people, you went over the history of this truck, you got paperwork, you've seen paperwork, you've shaken hands and kissed babies. That, you know, that's and then that's when you make your decision to put your money down. A $30,000, $40,000 truck, if you got decent freight, you're fine. You don't have to have super freight to um, cover a $35,000, $40,000 truck. You can run dry goods and make money to cover that. Do you want to come up with the big boys like me and run reefer? You understand what I'm saying? So you're good. 35,000, 40,000, that should be your range. You know, if you don't have the money to put a down payment, then wait until you get the money. Don't let your enthusiasm rush you into making a mistake. Now, other people that say something different. Look, I'm not the only guy who's been out here driving. I'm not the only guy with knowledge. I'm not the only person with experience. Well, you know, truck drivers are like doctors get second and third opinions. Okay, other experienced drivers may have a different approach. Okay? They may have you go the $25,000 route. Or, or even a $20,000 route. Me, I don't do that. I'm a high roller. I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a baller type. I want the big shit. Okay? You want if you want if you, if you want the big shit, you want to play big. You got to get the big shit. To me, thirty-five, forty thousand is how you should roll it. But that's just me. All right. Anyway. All right. So let's talk about new trucks. Well, first of all, the upfront, like, um, sales tax on a new truck, either buying or leasing it, is extremely high. But the con about a new truck, it comes with a factory warranty. Factory warranties are the shit. They cover significant damage that may happen on the road. Remember that dry train I told you that fell out? A factory warranty covers that. That's one of the cons of a new truck. Factory warranty. Now, don't get all excited because it's not all peaches and cream with a new truck either. Like I said, I've had both. I've had extensive experience with both new and used. Okay? So, keep listening. Um... And then also, people, when you go in and purchase a truck, 
whether it be new or used, right? This is a this is a serious investment. Okay, nine times out of ten, it's it's, it's your life savings because this is something that you've been wanting to do, and you finally got money. This this is an important decision, right? So make sure you go to professionals. See, I deal with I don't I don't like look I deal with professionals. I don't do shot shot and, and, and you know RJ and you know crazy crazy D and them around the corner and shit. We got their little hole in the wall. Although I, although I'm cool with them doing that, and I support them doing that, I'm just not taking my truck there. You hear what I'm saying? I ain't got no problem with crazy then. I got that little trucking thing in the middle of the block. I'm cool with that. I just ain't taking my truck there because crazy then can't give me any guarantees. They can't give me any warranties. And I don't feel like going down there and getting into a gunfight. Okay? If you feel you got to get into a gunfight, with the trucking dealer, don't go to that dealer. All right, anyway, okay, so, the cool thing about this is, when you make this decision, it's a very important decision, right? Because this truck is gonna be your business. This is how you're gonna make your money. So you want it to be in the best shape possible, and you wanna have the best options at your disposal. So you always go with professionals. Go to a reputable dealer. Don't go to these hole in the walls where some fucking mechanic is walking around in some overalls full of grease. Forget all that. Go to a professional. Go to a reputable dealer like Freightliner or Kenworth or or um, um, Peterbilt. That's what's out there. All right? That's what's out there. Deal with them, you know why? Because they can cover your losses if something goes wrong. These are well-established professional dealerships that have been around for for a long time. And they got the money, they got the credit. Some go on the truck, they got you. They can back you up. They can cover any loss. If something happens to one of their trucks, and it fucked you up, it screwed you up, they can cover your losses. Crazy D and them can't do that. You take your truck to Crazy D and them, they do some work on it, then you get a big heavy load, you drive down a, a road, the damn wheels fall off and the truck overturn to kill somebody. Crazy D and them gonna be gone, man. They out of town. You don't even know where they at. So, this is important for you. This is your, your decision. So you make sure, right, that that decision is made with professionals. All right? All right, let's get into the pros and cons. All right, okay. All right. And shout out to um, um, Bill Mort. <laughs> I just talk about the pros and cons of leasing a truck, all right? There are two possibilities to choose from when it comes to leasing the truck. A conventional lease, which means that you just go up to the um, company, I mean, the dealer, and you lease the truck for yourself, and then you're taking that truck to another company. You got a contract somewhere else. That is a conventional lease. And then a lease purchase. A lease purchase is much different. A lease purchase attaches you to a particular, I'm sorry, a, a um, um, particular company. Like for example, if you're lease purchasing, you're usually lease purchasing from that company. Like Schneider, or J.B. Hunt, or Prime, or Hirschbach, or, or, or um, uh, uh, Sal and Sons. Okay, those are just to give examples. You're purchasing, you're, you're leasing the truck from these companies, and you're running that truck under those companies. That's a lease purchase. 
it's, it, it, it's why they call the lease purchase because you have an option to buy it at the end of your lease agreement, which is a bunch of malarkey because that bubble payment, right, that you're supposed to accumulate the equity in the truck over a period of time, they eat that up. Yeah, too. Yeah, Craig Swift. They eat that bubble payment up. Don't get caught up in that. Don't see. Don't come into the industry on some super trucker crap. You go if if you do, you're gonna get smoked. I'm telling you that right now. Come into this game humble. Humble with your eyes wide open like this, hungry for information. Do not come into this business on some super crap or you will get smoked. These companies are waiting for people like you to come and talk about thinking you know everything. Don't come in here all jacked up. Man, I'm going to be an owner operator. I'm going to be an owner operator. It's going to be on first try. Don't come in here like that. You don't get smoked. Because as soon as you come in, he's coming to tell my son, you want to be on operator, they're going to jump right on you. Oh, yeah, we're going to make you on operator. You're going to be this, you're going to be that, you're going to be this. And they're going to get, they're going to put you on this contract that's going to have you paying for every expense in the entire spectrum, the entire universe, right? Where you make hardly no money. And they charge, let me tell you something. And those payments, oh yeah, let me get back to the conventional lease. With the conventional lease, right? You can make the payments monthly, but with a lease purchase, you have to make the payments weekly. Now with the conventional lease, you may make an eight hundred dollar payment for one month. But a convention but a lease purchase, you make it eight, nine hundred dollars a week. That's a huge difference. So you're talking about a, a, you know eight nine hundred dollars a week, right? And then the company they control your freight. See another problem with lease purchase: the company that you're leasing the truck from, or lease purchasing the truck from, they control your freight. So catch an attitude with one of the fleet managers and see what happens. See if you end up in a hole. And once you get in the hole, it's hard to get out. It's hard to get out because you got big time deductions coming out. And I'm telling you, they, 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 nickel and dime. They, they, on one of my settlements a while back, right, there was a big dispute about who the secretary was. Now you're talking about a fleet of 5,000 trucks. This secretary that was on everybody's fucking uh, um, um, settlement was getting $25 a truck. 5,000 trucks. What kind of secretary makes that money? What secretary makes that kind of money? What kind of secretary? I mean, what secretary makes that kind of money? She was getting $25 a week from 5,000 trucks. So, these are the ways that they nickel and dime you. Some of the settlements, right, you can't even read because there's so many numbers on them. With plus and minuses, you don't know what the hell's going on. Then when you call them up and say, hey, what's this, what's that? They catch an attitude with you and they purposely start a fight with you so they can hang up on you. That's what these places are like. That's how you can tell you how to fuck the crappy company, right? As soon as you call up about their, your money, they on some attitude shit. They on some, why you even call us? I mean, I've had I've had um, payroll get downright funky with me. 
I called one time about my money. It was like, what you expect me to do? What? Yeah, they get funky with you. Some of them get funky with you like that. Okay? I'll tell you a story about what happened to a dispatcher that got a little too funky and ended up costing him his life. I'll tell you that story. Somebody remind me, and I'll tell you, that happened a couple of years ago with a company called TRL, which is, on, which is now owned by Prime. Okay? So you can't get too cute in this business. Some of these truck drivers don't give a F. Okay, so you gotta be careful. Can't get too cute. But anyway, I digress. All right, okay, so with the convention lease agreement, right? The leasing company is obligated to repair the truck. So if you have a conventional lease and you're leased to a company, then that company is obligated to repair your truck. That's one upside. And and the cool thing about a a a, a conventional lease, you get a small down payment. And then you got a, a you know monthly payment. So to me, if you're going to lease, conventional lease would be the way to go. But let me tell you something about these leases. You never own these trucks. So don't go with it thinking that you're gonna be an owner operator at the end of the at the end of the below, um, lease agreement. Because they feed listen, they feed y'all these 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 stories, these fairy tales. Oh, there's gonna be a balloon payment at the end of the lease agreement. At the end of the lease agreement, you're gonna make twelve, thirteen thousand dollars. And since you've been making all these payments, it should only be about eight thousand dollars left on the on the agreement. So you got twelve thousand, you're paying eight thousand, and that means there's four thousand left for you. Nah, don't work that way. Don't work that way. Because when you turn in the truck, right? You have to go and get it inspected. And the inspection is done by the same company that you leased the pro, um, truck from. All of a sudden, prices go up. How about a screw costing you $175? How about a two-inch scratch costing you over $1,000 to repair? How about wear and tear, right, up somewhere like $1,300, $1,400? Everything is overpriced. And let me tell you something. They not only inspect the inside of the truck, they inspect the undercarriage as well. And you can't even get away with wear and tear. They charging you for that too. I mean, I watched one of these inspections, right? I watched this dude inspect this truck. He took a flashlight. Now, inside the truck, you have curtains, right? You got two of them. All right, they're like the separators between the back part of your cab and the front part of your truck. Okay? So, I sat and watched this dude roll up those uh, curtains and start from the bottom. Put a flashlight on it and then write them down the paper. Went a few more inches, put a flashlight on that part, wrote down on the paper, went a few more inches. He kept doing it until he got all the way up to the top of the uh, thing. You know what he was doing? He was writing down marks and how much they cost. Yeah, marks. If there was any scuff marks on the, on, on the curtain, he was writing that down and putting a price tag next to him. Like, like, like he would put scuff mark, right? Price, $60. Scuff mark, five inches, $75. I'm telling you, this, 
just 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 crazy stuff. When they're done with their inspection, you gonna end up owing them money. So there was no balloon payment. That's all a bunch of BS. There's no balloon payment. You'll never own that truck. All right, all right, anyway, so let me get over here. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. You know, lease purchase agreements, you know, they're contracts. And that's another thing that makes them, you know, avoidable in my opinion. Their contract, now, now back in the day when lease purchase first came out, you were locked into the contract. So if you leased for four years, then you was locked in for four years to stay with that company for four years. If you didn't and you broke the contract, I forgot you had to pay like a penalty or something. I forgot what the penalty was. You had to pay like a penalty. Now they got what is called a no uh, a no lock lease. Okay. Now, now it don't matter. You can walk away from the truck anytime you want. And my recommendation is that you don't walk up to it in the, um, to begin with. All right, these purchase agreements. A lot of trucking companies who offer lease to buy programs, they, they want the truck service at their facilities. If you can't get to their facilities, most likely you will be going to a TA. But they want really to have the truck serviced at their facilities because they make money off you like that. Okay? They make money off of you. Okay. And, 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 and to me, the drawback about that is if you can get, if your truck breaks down and you're next to a TA and say the, say the company's um, garage is about 40 miles away, but the TA is about 10 miles away, they make you get to the company um, thing there, right? Maybe you don't want to go to the company's garage. Because it's cheaper at the TA. No, no. They want you to bring it to the garage. So you really don't have any option. See, these purchases make you think you're running the show, but you're really not. Your name isn't even on the truck. You're just really a glorified uh, uh, company driver. You think you're on operator, but you're not. Now, the downside to these purchases, I only talk about this downside. There are other downsides, but the one I think is the most important that you should focus on because the other ones to me are very, very trivial. The biggest downside to these purchases. It's cost. You are responsible for every goddamn thing. You have to pay for every damn thing. And some companies are gangster. If you're pulling a reefer, they make you pay for their reefer fuel. And that's not even that's not even your damn bro. that's not even your trailer. They make you pay for their fuel. You, you gotta put reefer fuel in there. Uh, in their trailer, and they don't reimburse you. So, yo, man, why do I got to pay put fuel in your reefer? Oh, we had some drivers that was stealing reefer fuel. Oh, what the fuck that got to do with me? Okay, no, man, so all the drivers got to pay. And what you going to do? You want the freight, right? You got a truck with big payment. You can't afford to sit there and argue. And they know you can't because they got you between a rock and a hard place. So they can manipulate you any way they want. 
And then once you in, they start getting shitty to you. And uh, I mean, I mean, they start talking crazy after a while. I'm talking about punch you in your face type crazy. They feel bold because they figure that they got you where they want you and there's nowhere you can go. So they start shitting on you. The name of these purchase game is to farm people and get as many people as possible to work for absolutely nothing. Where the company makes all the money and the person makes zero. That's the name of the game. Okay. So, as far as this purchase, I wouldn't recommend it. I would go to I would go the route of buying a truck because the biggest advantage of buying a truck is that you own it. Now there is a disadvantage too if you don't have the if you don't have the freight, you gotta worry about the insurance. And all the repair bills are your responsibility. So when you buy a truck, a truck is not for the faint of heart. You buy a truck, that means you're ready to roll, you're ready to run with the big boys. Now these purchase can can, can get you started, but that's not something you really want to do. That's my um, observation. I'm sorry. That's my um, thoughts. Also, don't forget the taxes to take into consideration. Especially with your lease purchase. Make sure if you run the lease purchase program and that's what you're going to try to do to make it work. I don't know how you're going to make it work. They say that people made lease purchasing work before, right? But you don't never see these people. You can't contact these people. You don't meet. I've never met anybody in the trucking industry that completed successfully a lease purchase program. But they see. But they say that they're out there. And for some reason, the company always has this person. That is the most successful at the least purchase. One person, not more than one, just one person. And people fall for that. Hey, wait a minute. You got 5,000 trucks and only one person was successful at your least purchase program? We don't ask those kinds of questions. Because many of us are caught up talking about some, we want to be on operators. Just be careful of that. All right? No cakes. So we're getting ready to get out of here. Um, hopefully that was helpful. Next week we'll probably talk about, um, hold on one second. Um, let me see. What do I want to talk about next week? I don't know. I'll probably talk about um, how COVID-19 is affecting uh trucking industry you know and then we'll probably get back into some more of purchasing the truck there's still a lot more that I can cover I don't have time to sit here with you for a couple hours you know about an hour is all I got so I want to thank you and again shout out to Jay Rich trucking so it's over there doing big things now she's running government contracts and we're going to talk about other truck driving business. Matter of fact, we'll talk about starting a truck driving business the next time we are online with the fifth wheel. All right, everybody, listen. Thanks for coming through. My new show, The Fifth Wheel, where we talk about all things trucking. Just getting started on this. So, um, I don't know exactly when I'll be broadcasting, but it's going to always be in the morning. So I'm going to be at night. Okay? And, um, I keep you abreast of what's going on in the truckers' world. We're going to talk about authorities. We're going to talk about CDLs. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff. Let's do a truck. All right, everybody? 
want to say uh, peace, power, unity. Thanks for um, coming to my show. And I'll see you guys next week sometime uh, or whenever else we see you here on the fifth wheel. All right, everybody? Peace.